Well, Ricky, you've uh, had a bit of a hemi. Are you uh, ready to go? Do you have to have a fitness test or are you declaring yourself cherry ripe? Um, I'm right to go right now. Yeah, I've uh, done everything that's been required on me the last couple of days of training. I came down early this morning and did probably 20, 30 minutes of running before the rest of the boys got here today, um, which is part of the, the process that the physios have sort of mapped out for me for the next couple of days. Um, I'll probably ramp things up a little bit again tomorrow. I'll do a bit more uh, intense running tomorrow, a bit, uh, a bit more sprint work tomorrow and have another um, full-on hit in the nets, but um, I didn't feel anything with it today, so I expect to be right. Chloe? Um, Ricky, does it feel a bit strange to be going into the first test of the summer um, not as the favourite to win the series, as the underdog, I suppose? Do you accept that tag? That's just what we've got ahead of us. Um, and I don't think there's anything anything negative at all about being an underdog going into a series. And I, you know, I said that yesterday, that I think South Africa are um, deservedly the number one team in the world, but I, I think the gap between them and us is not that great. Um, and... You know, when, when we were number one, we knew that we had everyone chasing us. And South Africa are certainly going to know over the next few weeks that they've got a very good Australian cricket team chasing them and um, trying to take uh, that number one mantle away. But, you know, what comes with that is we know that we have to play our best cricket for five days of every test match. Um, that's the great challenge for the team. We're not, you know, you can't look ahead and, and say, oh God, if we win this series, you know, we, we take the number one mantle back. We've got to worry about winning the first hour on Friday first and making sure we back it up with another good session and another good day. Um, and if we do that for long enough through the series, then the results will look after themselves. Sean? Yeah, Ricky, just um, on the hammy again, but tomorrow, 100%, you'll, you'll go flat out sprinting. Is that when you're going to absolutely test it? Yeah, I'll do some more running between wicket type stuff, some shorter, sharper stuff. The running I did today was over sort of 70 or 80 metres and more run-through type stuff, so tomorrow I'll be more intense than today. Are you confident it's going to be sweet, yeah? I've got no, no worries at all about it. Rolls. How hard were the quicks going in the nets today? Yeah, pretty hard. It's pretty hard in my net. Um, uh, there's a bit in the wickets at the back and, and new balls, and that's the way I like to train. So, you know, there's a bit of um, speculation around about the makeup of our fast bowling attack going into this game. So the boys have all been working exceptionally hard and trying to impress, and uh, and that's good. You know, that's the sort of intensity we, we demand around our net sessions now. Um, that's one of the aspects I think that, uh, you know, has been spot on for the last few years of our training and preparation is that when it's time to train that all the bowlers are going flat out and they've got new balls and all the batters are making sure they get through their first 20 balls in the nets. So, um, you know, today and yesterday our intensity around our training has been as you'd expect and hopefully that carries over into Friday. Uh, Rick, I suppose it's one of the most uh, inexperienced top three you've, you've Australia's probably had in, in quite a while, and, and some some people would say it's maybe a little bit bit flaky. I mean, Ed's still got a bit of development, I guess, to go, and, and uh, obviously with Rob coming in, what do you make of that top three? I think they're all very good players. Um, I think they've all, well, with the exception of Rob, who's making his debut. I mean, Ed, I thought Ed looked um, right at home when he first came into the Australian uh, Test team. Uh, Davies had moments of brilliance that we've, we've all seen and if he can have that through this series as well then he'll set up games for us very quickly. Um, I've watched Rob pretty closely the last few weeks. I played a shield game against him two weeks ago. Obviously watched a bit of his innings last week in, in Sydney and a bit in the nets the last couple of days. He to me just looks like someone that's in control of his game. You know, He's got a lot of cricket under his belt, uh, a lot of experience. Um, you know, as I said yesterday, very well coached by a very good batting coach in Victoria um, and as I said, someone that knows his game. So. Experience-wise, yes, it, it's probably not what we're used to around an Australian team, but skill-wise and, and know-how-wise and technique-wise, I think we're, they're fine. Yep. Ricky, um, much has been said about their attack. Um, what about ours? Have we got a, an attack to, you know, take it to them as well? Are you confident in our attack? Yeah, I don't see their batting lineup being any stronger than India's was last year. And the attack that we put out last year will pretty be very similar to what we go out with tomorrow in our conditions and conditions that we know very well. And, um, you know, all the guys of, you know, Siddle and Pattinson especially have got a lot of first-class cricket under their belt uh, and have taken a lot of wickets at the start of the summer. So they're confident, they're bowling well. I've faced both those guys in the nets today and I'd expect, um, you know, that, that they'll have, have good series. Um, that's the way we've got to look at it. We, we, have, to, we have to know that... The way that we bowled and the way that we played last year was somewhere near our best, and if we can produce that again, it doesn't matter what batting lineup we're bowling to, we'll, we'll take 20 wickets in a test match. Sure. Um, one and two playing, obviously, there's competitive right from word go. Um, sledging, these two teams, uh, obviously, Morkel likes to say a few words, and some of your guys like to say a few words. Do you expect that to be part of this series and taking each other on? A few words spoken? We'll wait and see. Probably. I mean, it's a, it is a. There's been a big build-up to the series already. Um, whenever Australia and South Africa play, the rivalry and um, the way we go about our cricket is very similar. 
Um, you know, I expect it to be good, hard, tough test match cricket. Whether that means there's words spoken or not, I don't know. Um, that's stuff that happens in the heat of the battle, but we've got no preconceived ideas about going out there and, and sledging or talking. Um, we'll hopefully do the talking with the bat and ball. But you've done your homework on each one of their players and some of them perhaps are a bit... Because in the past, South Africa perhaps a bit, uh, a bit wobbly when it comes down to some moments in test history. Um, we've done their homework on all of their players and um, a lot of homework on all of their players. Uh, we've got very specific plans, the way we're going to bowl to a lot of their batsmen. We've got, as a batting group, spoken long and hard about the way that their bowlers will bowl to us as well. So, um, you know, we got a lot of that stuff done in our team meeting yesterday and I think, as I said to the, the batting group when we left our meeting, it's, it's nice to know that stuff and, you know, a bit of inside information from, from the coach on, on how their bowlers will probably try and bowl to us as well is, is good, but... At the end of the day, it's about how we react when it's happening on the field. Um, it's no good having preconceived ideas about where they might attack you or, or where they mightn't attack you. It's about reacting to what they bowl on the day. Um, you can have the best plans in the world, and unless you can execute them, then it, it doesn't really matter. So, you know, we've got some areas from their batsmen that we're going to target. Our young quicks are, are dying to get out there and have a crack at, especially some of their top order players. Um, you can expect some fireworks. In some of their top order can expect a lot of short balls as well, which is an area that we think we can we can really attack them. So. Um, all in all, our preparation so far has, has been good. We've left no stone unturned um, and we'll hit the ground with some good, intense, hard test match cricket on Friday. Um, Ricky, South Africa have been number one for a little while now, but I think their last 20 tests they haven't won two in a row at any point. Do they have the, the sort of killer instinct that the Australians had when they were at, at number one? I don't know. I don't spend any time inside their dressing room. I don't know what makes them tick. I don't know what, what makes them worried about uh, big occasions in games. So... You know, all I know is that when we've played our best and um, played our best for long periods of time against South Africa, we've managed to have a lot of success, and that's against most teams we play as well. Um, you know, we know we know what it is that that makes us play our best cricket. We know what it is that makes us achieve great results. And you know, as I said in the first question today, we just have to uh, do those things better than South Africa do for five days. Uh, that's what Test cricket's all about. And you look back to the you know, the great days of Australian teams and, and Australian cricket, we didn't do anything miraculous. We just did the basics um, better than most teams did and for longer periods of time. So that's our focus over the next five days as well. Ricky, there's a lot of focus on, on Stain, of course, but um, what's the biggest challenge of facing someone as tall as Morkel and his record against Australian batsmen isn't as good as it is against some other countries? So can you sort of explain that? Yeah, I think we've played him well in the past. Um, what is it that makes him such a good bowler? Well, when you're, that, when you're that tall and you bang a ball into the wicket, you tend to get more bounce than the, sh the shorter, fast bowlers do. I think that's his great weapon. Um, we've had a look at what he's done over the last few series as well. If anything, he's managed to bowl a little bit fuller the last few years than he probably did before that, which has probably enabled him to have a bit more success. Um, yeah, uh, what makes him, you know... The thing about their attack is they're a, a well-rounded attack. They're, all their bowlers are slightly different. So, you know, you, there's no... Uh, as, it is, as is the case in most international games and test matches, there's, there's no room to relax whatsoever. They'll, they'll keep coming at us. We know that. You know, Stain's the guy they go to when things get a bit tight and a bit tough. He's their wicket-taking man and their go-to man. So, um, and we're aware of that. We, if we can negate him wickets through the series, we'll go a long way to winning. Ricky, you talk about, um, you know, winning hour by hour. How much is that first hour on, on Friday, how much will that set the tone for the series? Well, it's not the be-all and end-all, but that's what we're preparing for now. Um, you know, the tone can be set in the first hour of the first test match. Um, yeah, so that's what we're, we're building towards with, it, with all our preparations about making sure that we're, you know, whether we bat first or bowl first, that we're right to dominate that first hour of the game. And I'm sure when Graham comes in or whoever comes in from South Africa today, they'll say exactly the same thing. So it, that's nothing new. That's the way we always go about it and what we always prepare for. And, um, yeah, we're well on the way to being right for Friday morning. Ricky, um, Mickey Arthur was saying yesterday that uh, he, he found Michael Clark and Graham Smith to be similar characters. They, people listened when they talked and they're both, you know, big fellas in, in, in aura terms and I suppose he would know. But... I don't know if you're in a, in a position to, to agree or disagree with that. Do you find Michael Clark and Graham Smith to be similar people? Well, I've never sat in a dressing room with Graham Smith. Um, and I've never been one to sort of sit back and listen to everything that he said either. But, um, you know, that's what you expect of a leader in any, in any team that you're, you're in. You expect your captain to be someone that everyone listens to and, and, and commands respect from everyone in that team. 
you know, Graham's been around a long time and been captain of South Africa for a long time and, and had great success as a captain. So you'd expect that the guys would be listening to every word that he said. Certainly around our team at the moment, you know, we've got um, very clear views of where we're going and, and, and obviously well led by the captain and the boys are trying to toe the line. So, uh, you know, for me now being in a slightly different position than I have for most of my career, it's, it's good to, to sit back and just, uh, you know, try and do what um, the captain wants me to do as a player and as a senior player in the side and, um, yeah, so far so good. This is fantastic, Matt. Um, there's a coaching vacancy in, in WA from today onwards. Your, uh, your batting coach is a... He quit this morning. Um, your batting coach is obviously a, a possible to take it over. One, if he went, what, what impact would that have on the Australian team? And two, what are the traits that he'd have that would make him a, a reasonable coach? Um, yeah, I guess whenever there's a vacancy in Western Australian cricket anywhere around the coaching roles, Justin's name always seems to come up. Um, you know, being one of the favourite sons of WA cricket, I guess you can understand why. Um, yeah, this is the first news I've heard about uh, the coach resigning over there. Um, and to tell the truth, I haven't spoken to, uh, obviously haven't had a chance to speak to Justin about it, but um, no doubt his name will come up a bit more today. Um, you know, and his name came up a couple of years ago, I know, when Lockie Stevens was appointed coach there. Um, you know, he probably wasn't quite ready for that job now, then, but, you know, with a couple of years of being a batting coach around the Australian team. Um, look, he'd be ready for any coaching job that came up, but you know, I must admit um, I'd love to have him around here a bit more. He's a, he's a great mate of mine and someone that's had a big impact on the way that my game's turned around in the last you know, six or eight months as well. We've worked tirelessly and endlessly on, on trying to get my technique back to where it needed to be to be a, you know, a good international player. So, it, look, you know, hypothetically, if he happened to leave, it'd be a great loss for the Australian cricket team. Um, but I think it'd be a, a great gain for Western Australian cricket. Sure. Ricky, I saw Michael Clark got whacked on the wrist out there in the nets. Um, was that as fast as you've been in the nets at the Gabba for since you've been coming up here? They were pretty nippy and pretty green, weren't they? There's a bit, there's a bit in them today. Yeah, um, you know, having the morning session with the covers being on all, all night obviously makes them nip around a little bit more, but. I must admit, I didn't see him get one on the wrist. I saw him had his, he had his hand in the ice. I thought that was from catching out in the slips this morning. We all had a pretty decent workout in the slips as well, and most of us got sore hands from that. But, uh, yeah, there's a bit of spice in the wicket, but that's what we're going to get on Friday. So um, the more that we can train and prepare for that um, over the next couple of days, the better. Um, Ricky, you've seen a lot of uh, shield cricket the last six weeks or so, and, and with great success yourself. Uh, do, you, do you agree with um, some of the criticism of the, the pitches and that you know, they're perhaps not creating the even contest between bat and ball that, that's needed? Yeah, I think we have to remember, though, that we, we started a month or five weeks earlier than the, the season normally starts in Australia as well, so you can probably understand that some of the wickets might be slightly underdone, underprepared. Um, you know, the wicket we played on in Hobart last week that I can speak about was that's the, the whole surface had been relayed down there, the wicket block had been relayed, and that was the first um, longer-form game that had been played on the, re, um, the resurfaced wicket block. So, yeah, that one was hard work for the top order down there, and... Um, you know, I think we had to chase 220 in the last innings of the game, which was only halfway through day three, and we couldn't get them. So that was hard work for batters. The same thing, I guess, was it happened at Allen Border Field, didn't it? Well, that game only just went into the third day as well. So I guess um, if you're asking me as a batsman only, it probably wasn't perfect preparation going into a, um, a test match here. But thankfully for me, I'd had you know three other Shield games to spend plenty of time in the middle and feel good about my game before that one. You know, someone like. Pup, who's um, you know been dying to get some time in the middle and gets a wicket like he got last week, is um, you know obviously not ideal. But there is a balance there somewhere. I think probably on a whole, the last couple of years, the balance has probably slightly been in the bowler's favour. But um, you know, get, getting wickets absolutely perfect every time is not easy either. Ricky, you would have played against Jacques Callis uh, for as many years as I suppose he's been playing. And, and one of the things that's been said about him now is that his personality is coming more to the fore and he's starting to play a more behind-the-scenes leadership role, I suppose similar to what you're doing um, in your role in the Australian dressing room. Have you noticed any changes in, in his character and do you think maybe he can play a significant role behind the scenes? Oh, look, I'm sure he could. Uh, once again, with Jacques, I don't know him and his personality that well either, but we've played a lot of cricket against each other over the years, and I guess if you wanted to sit back and watch someone and learn from someone, then he's a pretty good guy to be studying. I mean, he's had great success with bat and ball. Um, but to be totally honest, it doesn't bother me what he's doing in the South African rooms. He's our number one opponent this week, and, and we've got to find every way that we can to, to break him down and make sure he doesn't have any you know, major impact on the series. Uh, that's our job this week. Um, 
you know, we can catch up and talk and everything once this series is over and done with. But, um, you know, come Friday morning, it's, uh, it's going to be good, old-fashioned, hard, tough test match cricket, the way that we like to play. And, um, yeah, that's what I think is making this series so exciting. Last question, Ben. Uh, Rick, at the, the, uh, the Oval in uh, 2009, plenty of people scoffed uh, when you said that you might be back for another race. I think I was probably one of them. Do you think um, you, you've proved, I suppose, a lot of people wrong in the last uh, 18 months? I mean, the Ashes is only six months away and you're almost there. Yeah, for, for me, it's not about proving people wrong. It's it's about playing the brand of cricket that I want to play and winning games for Australia. That's what it's always been about. I don't care what anyone says about me. You know, I'll continue to work hard and and hopefully score runs and hopefully win win games for Australia. Um, you know, I've had my ups and downs the last couple of years. There's no doubt about that. But I'm normally the first one on the training track. I'm normally the last one to leave. And um, when I'm not, and I haven't got that desire to do that, then it'll be time for me not to be playing the game anymore. But you know, I've. I felt really good about in you know, my pre-season. I felt really good about the way the season started. I just got to make sure that I carry that over now into um, into Test match cricket. So um, yeah, everything's on track. Um, you know, a little setback with a sore leg the last couple of days, but that's feeling great. And I'm looking forward to Friday as much as ever. You know, I think it's my 20th or 21st year of first-class cricket, um, and I'm as excited about Friday as I ever have been. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.